Hello there, only one Kenobi here, only one. <clears throat> yeah, it's time for a part two of this. It's about two weeks ago since I actually opened it. And it is the uh, Dash Rendar Outrider. Check out my previous video if you want to see a review on it. But now, as promised, I'm going to put the stickers... Excuse me, the stickers on it. I'm glad I reviewed it first hand without the stickers on because... Uh, just to, yeah, get a look of it, pure and plain. And it, it is a very well detailed ship as I discussed in the last video. In fact, it does look lovely. Look at that, actually. I can understand why points of articulation, go check his review out, raves about the detail. He's absolutely right. But when you put the stickers on, I'm worried that it'll start to look more like a toy. It might actually enhance the details. It depends on how you shoot it. As you can see, I'm filming this in natural light. But uh, it is a nice piece, and as discussed in the last video and in the comments extensively, this ship would be, oh, imagine if it was done in a bigger scale, because at the minute you can't, you can't make use of the living compartment in there like you can the Millennium Falcon. And also the cockpit is only a one-man cockpit, or person, <laughs> to be politically correct. You know what I'm saying, man. Anyway, so it's only a one-pilot cockpit, and... That's a shame as well. It would be good if you could fit at least two in, like the classic can of toys, because you did see that in Shadows of the Empire, Dash and his droid Lebo. But for now, I don't know how long this is gonna take me, but I'm not gonna make you suffer through all of it. There's a lot of them, look at this. It goes up to like 60 there, 64. And as you'll remember from my last review, this is, uh, there's no English on these <laughs> instructions. It's a, like an import. And here are the stickers. I suppose when you look at it like that, it's not too bad, is it? But I hate applying stickers. I've made a balls of it on vehicles as recent as the Obi-Wan Kenobi Vintage Collection Jedi Starfighter. That, that was definitely a sticker, a sticker inserted vehicle. But then again, the Legacy Falcon was, which is also a Vintage Collection item as well. Even the most recent one from Galaxy's Edge had stickers so it is possible to get vehicles with stickers but it, you always run the risk of applying them incorrectly so these here are the ones i really want to get on the most because there's a nice bit of weathering on those grills and uh, i think that the visual of the actual grills themselves will set it off but it's a great little vehicle the outrider everyone's saying about oh haslab this haslab that man if i was running hasbro it would be a haslab in fact no it wouldn't be I'd, I'd get rid of the six inch line and i would keep pumping out three and three quarter inch and this would be on your shelves in forbidden planet or wherever because i'm sure it would sell wouldn't it from the 90s crew anyway they are numbered on the sheet as well see so uh all I've got to do is match the strip of sticker with its place on here. God, this is going to be a really complicated assemble, ladies and gentlemen, but let's get on with it. As you see, I've gone wide angle. I think that might help us. Let's do it. And ladies and gentlemen, we are done. That took almost 50 minutes. Well, it was 50 minutes on the timer almost. Uh, that was quite hard or long. Quite therapeutic, I suppose, in a way. Took a bit of concentration and skill. But, um, and the answer is I'm glad I've done it for the purposes of the video. But really, um, I suppose it looks, well, it makes it look more 90s now. <laughs> 90s toy, but, um, would I recommend doing it? I don't know, if you really, if you've got it as cheap as I got it, 45 pounds, go for it. But in terms of look, it was looking well enough without the stickers is what I mean to say. But apart from here, now this, I don't regret because I'll close it up in a minute. That was really good. As soon as I put them on, I thought, yeah, 
that's what we want to see. Maybe I should have only just put those ones on, but some of the others were just a bit pointless. In some cases, as you may have seen in the video when I sped it up, I didn't align them perfectly. They're kind of, they're not symmetrical, but they're at least they're in line, but they're not necessarily symmetrical. But I just thought, well, it's neat enough. I'll, I'll roll with it. Some of them have done a better job than most, but um, see the alignment's okay, but just not necessarily symmetrical. But it's given it some features. Some of them were pretty pointless. Like that one there, right on the base. And some of them I actually disobeyed. This one for 67 and 63, I did not put them where they were supposed to be. And that rhymed. I'm a poet and I didn't know it. And so in the end, I think that was 63 there. Or 67. 67 was supposed to go, like, according to the picture, it was supposed to go there. It just didn't look right because it's a square. So I was trying to find another area that's square. Probably would have been better there, but I didn't want it to interfere with that nice weathering. So I just stuck it on the corner. And you can see that's the worst sticker I've applied. Let me get it steady. You can see that I've tried to... Look, that's where I've been digging at the corner getting under it that's why it's slightly creased on that corner but I get a black pen on that get a whiteboard pen whiteboard pens are really good sometimes with things like that because it will stay permanent on the crevices but it will be wiped clean from the smooth surfaces you know what I mean so I can dab it on and then it'll only really go over the white where it's no longer glossy and that's about it, really. I'm gonna put it get together completely. Some bits really make a difference, like these are really good. They're nice, and that fits in all right. It does set it off, doesn't it? The color, the extra color does give it that bit more feature. Don't forget, this is from a video game. So dare I say, dare I say it gives it that a bit more vibrancy color, but, and yeah, you've got that classic kind of thing going on as well. Uh, when I got my Millennium Falcon, not that one, the one in the 1980s, which I no longer have. God knows whatever happened to that. But it wasn't me who put the stickers on because I was very young. I would have been six or seven, probably, if that. Which is very young, but um, my dad would have put them on. So, uh, well done, dad. But as someone said in the comments, they, the reason they bought this back in the 90s was because they couldn't afford the actual Falcon. So this was another uh, option for anybody who wanted to get something that resembled the Falcon that wasn't quite as expensive. And having said that, I don't know what they charged for the Power of the Force Falcon back in the day. If anyone knows that, let me know. Or what this cost back in 95. I got it for £45, which is a bit of a bargain. Boom. Now I've put the stickers on, it is working that bit better. Let me give you some more shots. Yeah, it gives it that bit more. I mean, look at the background there. See, you've got the razor crest. You know, from the yellow of the R to the tint of the glass with a bit of blue there, it's got color. This was looking desperately bland without the stickers, despite lovely efforts at some spray weather in there. You know what I mean? Airbrush almost. Uh, but now it's got these stickers on. No, I don't regret that. I'm glad I've done it. It looks pretty cool. I like it. Yeah, man. Look at that. I think it looks all right. Whereas that there, I'm glad I've not applied the stickers to that because it already looks amazing. There is the option of putting extra stickers on this to give it, you know, that's not a sticker. That's weathering painted on. But, you know, I think it's supposed to be oil drips or rust deposits and stuff like that. I don't know what it is, but I never put them on that. Same with the Falcon. My first Falcon for the Galaxy's Edge was faulty. I put all the stickers on that one. But when this one arrived, I never bothered. Um, and it, you, nobody would know, because most of them are on the inside anyway. And it looks so good, I just left it and just thought, well, no, i would save me the hassle, because to be honest, that is really difficult. On the inside of the cockpit lid, <sighs> they're really difficult to apply. And I just thought, nah, keep them, keep them mint. Keep them on the side, so I've got them at least mint. Whereas with this, there you are, ladies and gentlemen. They are all on there. There are, in total, something like 60. Let's have a look and see. I think it's 66. 66 stickers. That nearly took me 66 minutes. <laughs> well, I'm just joking. It was almost an hour. It was a long time. But then again, if you're going to do a proper job, take the time. 
Ladies and gentlemen, that is the last time I will be videoing this in terms of reviewing it and setting it up. But it is a lovely ship. Let's just end this with that one remark there. That it is an historic piece in the Star Wars Kenner line, for damn sure. But also Hasbro, Star Wars, three and three quarter inch in total. And a lot of people watched my last video when I reviewed it. So I appreciate that. And I hope you've all come back to see the finale final stage of the review thank you for watching this video if you are new subscribe this has been only one kenobi only one out